G. Marshall. The year 1976 is not only our bicentennial year, it also brings us something extra to celebrate. It's leap year, and all of us get a present of an extra day. What to do with it? It should be something very special and exciting. A new experience. Or maybe it's better to treat it just like any other day. You wouldn't, in your right mind, want to do what John McCaffrey did with it. Unless you enjoy having the very blood curdle in your veins. Our mystery drama, The Other Side of the Coin was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Ian Martin and stars Ralph Bell. It is sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and all state insurance companies. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Amnesia, that favorite device for authors is a symptom. There are many forms. The most familiar to all of us, one of two, anterograde or lacunar. The first of these means simply the loss of memory of past experiences. The second means loss of memory for isolated events, a gap in memory. Patchy recollection with sudden blanks. It's a common result of having a little too much to drink. And then, like John McCaffrey, you wake up one morning with that terrible knowledge that somewhere the night before, you can't remember what happened at all. Oh, 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 why do I always have to turn off the alarm? Oh, Gee, no. Mm, mm. I don't know why, but last night you were flipping your lid unless you got up this early. What? What time is it? Eight o'clock. A.M. Like you ordered. Who gets up in the middle of the night anymore? Eight A.M. That's morning. Oh, it's your problem, not mine. Leave me alone. I want to go back to sleep now. <laughs> It wasn't that I had a hangover. Oh, sure, my mouth was dry and my nose stopped up and I shouldn't have had that last drink. That last drink. That or the ones before it had to be the same problem. Otherwise, what was I, a good Irish Catholic family man, a member of the police department, doing in bed with a kind of blonde a guy like me only sees in the set of four to one of those magazines? Where are you going, baby? Uh, in the bathroom. Hurry back, Gina. The whole thing is crazy. A dream? A nightmare? Where was Mary? What must she be thinking? As I closed the bathroom door behind me, my mind was in a turmoil. What was I doing here? And then I looked in the mirror above the wash basin and every question was suddenly compounded. Because although I knew and lived in every fiber of my being as Detective Sergeant John McCaffrey, the face that stared back at me from the mirror was someone else. An intriguing, familiar someone else. But who? Gina? Baby? Yeah? Aren't you coming back to bed with me? No, I've got an appointment. With who? How you know? How should I know? You, you don't mean the head man. Who else? Look, Jelly? The boss man? Oh, murder. But what time? I don't know. Can't you tell me? Me? Well, what am I going to say to you? Last night after... Well, last night is a blank to me. Oh, you really tied one on all right. Well, what, what, what'd I do? Where'd I go? I don't know. You weren't with me. What do you mean? I wasn't with you. Well, just like I said. Well, where was I? Honey, that's what I'd like to know. Well, I mean, 
How do we... I, I mean, where? You, you don't remember? No. Oh. Well, we were having dinner at Gilberto's, just the two of us. Except for our usual muscle boy, when you got a phone call. You left your answer to take me home, and you took off. That's the last I saw of you till you fell in the door around midnight and I had to put you to bed. Oh, boy, were you stoned. Who did I get the phone call from? Well, you're the one who says you have an appointment. Don't you know? I didn't have an answer for the question. I didn't want to answer it. I didn't want to know what my appointment was. All I wanted to be was myself, John McCaffrey, and be safe at home with wife Mary in Bayside. What was I doing here in a strange bed in a strange house with a strange woman? And who was the phone ringing for? I knew the way things were. I was the one supposed to answer, but who was the person on the other end going to think I was? If that's the godfather, you better answer. Hello? Gino? Yeah. Just a reminder. Of what? You know, you had 24 hours. You got 14 left. You in or out? Well, isn't that something we can straighten out this morning? You want to talk to the uncle? Go talk to him. My tip is, the spot you're in, better see the man himself. Hello? Hello? Ah. Uh. Now, what are you hacking around for? You're just asking for trouble. What's the matter? You afraid you're going to get mixed up in it? Yeah, I'm scared stiff. But that isn't where it begins. I'm more scared for you than I am for me. For what it's worth, you don't have to worry about me. Are you kidding? No. I can sense it with that zombie Lorenzo. The word is out. You're contracted. Not me. Look, look, honey, hold I... it, hold it. I can't explain it all, but... You really want to help me? You have to ask. Okay. I'm trying to level with you, Mary. I... Mary? What? I'd be green-eyed and scratching if I didn't know you long enough to be sure there's no Mary. But I'm Gloria. Remember, sweetheart? Uh, yeah, sure. Gloria, Gloria. That's that's what I said. Hey, Gina, are you all right? Yeah, sure. No. No, I'm not. I got a head bigger than an elephant and no memory to go along with it. Oh, you... You mean you honestly don't remember last night? No, I don't. You've drawn a complete blank? I guess that's just the way it is. I'm sorry. Oh, Gino, it isn't like you. A lot of things aren't like you. You know, I mean... Honestly, this morning is like waking up in bed with a stranger. Yeah, then try this for size. What's my name? You, your name? Yeah, who am I? Oh, you've got to be kidding. Let's play that I'm not who, huh? Gino Carpacci. Who else? It could have rocked me on my heels, except I knew it was coming. It just had to be the way things were going. The last ironic note in the whole life that had suddenly fallen apart less than 24 hours before. It had all started so simply when I went in response to a message to see the captain of our precinct. Oh, hello, Johnny. Uh, come in and sit. That's a strange invitation. You greeting me like I just came in by chance. We both know it isn't that way. You called me in. Yeah, Johnny, I know. Uh, I wish to heaven I didn't have to. Well, we can level, I hope. Is it what I think? I guess maybe. I just can't believe it. No more than me. I've been a long time in the department. I've never seen anything like this. I'm fired, huh? Retired. Huh. Same difference. Well, there'll be the pension. Uh... Yeah, 20 years. Don't bring enough. You know, I wanted to put in my 30. I know. How could they knock me off with my record? Well, it's their way off the hook. They call it... Uh... Attrition. A painless way of cutting the budget. Yes, except the guy that gets caught. And to the one who has to do the cutting. Especially when he's losing his best man and a damn good friend. Look, I, I'm, I'm sorry, Johnny. 
I wish there was an easy way to do it. No, there isn't. You know what I'd like to really cut? My throat. The best years ahead of me, pensioned off at peanuts. And where in God's name was I going to find another job? I was too sick to my stomach to face Mary. I called her instead. Hello. Hi, Mayor. How are you, hon? Oh, fine, John, darling. I, I got something special on the stove for you tonight, John. Oh, <laughs> well, gosh, honey, I, uh, I'm not going to be able to make it home for dinner tonight. Oh, are you on the case? I hope it's not dangerous. Oh, no, no, no. It, uh, well, it, it isn't a case exactly. I got to go over some things with uh, Bill Deems, you know, uh, the captain. But what about dinner? Oh, we'll, uh, we'll have a sandwich in. Oh, I hate to see you not fed right. Well, will you be late? Yeah, it uh, might be kind of, uh, well, uh, uh, don't, don't wait up, Mary. Uh, we'll probably go out afterwards, have a glass of beer or something. All right, darling. And, and take it easy on the booze. You know what the doctor said. <laughs> I know, I know. I got the taste for it, but not the head. <laughs> it's all right, darling. I promise you I won't drink any more. It's good for me. Why now? I love you, Jono. I love you. I left the precinct house and I started walking till I... Till I what? Oh, Johnny boy, you really did black out, didn't you? It's all a blank. Till the moment this morning you woke up in a strange bed in a strange apartment with a woman you'd never seen before in your life. But it's worse than that. Open your eyes and you're not John McCaffrey anymore. You're Gino Carpacci. Open your mouth and that's how you sound like. Gino Carpacci. Vice boss, kingpin of the city's prostitution rackets, porn, parlors, numbers, gambling. Gino Carpacci. Me? You sure, Gloria? I know my own husband, I hope. Though this morning, I don't know the way you're acting. I... Oh, look, baby, you better get a shower and a shave and get your tail over to that appointment. What, no, Charlie? The man himself. Oh, Gino, what did you do? I don't know. You couldn't steal him again? Gloria, I don't know. You've got to have some idea. You're going to be on the carpet. And, baby, it's no red one there rolling out for you. Oh, Gino... I'm scared. I don't know what's happening. So am I. That makes two of us. It was while I was getting dressed that I thought of Mary. She must be frantic. I'd have to call. And then I thought, with this voice, how could that reassure her? And in this body, how could I go home? And then, suddenly, colder than the shower I just had... My bones were ice water, thinking to myself. Wait a minute. If I'm me in Gino's body, who slept beside Mary last night? And what prisoner was locked up in it? I had to find out. Hello. Mary? Yes? Who is this? Uh, never mind for the moment. Uh, is, uh... Is your husband there, John McCaffrey? Yes, he is. Could... Could I talk to him, please? Well, not right at the moment. He's not feeling himself this morning. I could have him call back. I... Uh, no, never mind. I'll call back later. So now I knew. But I wasn't ready to talk about it yet. First, where in the name of reason had I been last night... And what happened? Teasing, tantalizing in the back of my mind was some vagrant memory. If I could just seize on it. Maybe there was a way out of this nightmare. Probably the most damaging part of a hangover is the terrible and unavoidable guilt feeling. But that seldom lasts long beyond the morning after, and life resumes its normal course, usually, but not this time. And come to think of it, 
Just whose hangover is it? John McCaffrey's or Gino Carpaccio's? I'll return shortly with Act Two. There's a favorite Greek word of mine which has become very current these days. Dichotomy. It means, basically, division into two parts. Two things occurring at the same time, but which interrelate with each other, which is what this story is about. We've looked at one side of the coin. Let's have a look at the other. As Mary McCaffrey wakes with the usual 7.30 alarm in the manner she has for 20 years with her husband beside her in the bed. Johnny, it's that time. Mm-hmm. What, what is it? Time to get up. Get up? In the middle of the night? Oh, darling, I'm sure you don't feel well. W- would you like a little aspirin? Where am I? Where on earth would you be except your own bed in Bayside? Bayside? Long Island. How did I get here? Oh, now, don't be silly. You came home. So, come to think of it, the shape you were in, it was a kind of a miracle. Home? This is home? What's the matter with you? I know you tied one on last night, but can't you shake the cobwebs this morning? Where are you going now? Uh, To the bathroom. Where is it? Where else would it be but where it always has been, out in the hall? Oh, you're in worse shape than I've ever seen you. You're not yourself at all. She was right. But looking at myself in the mirror, I liked about knocked me right over. I wasn't Gino Capacci anymore. I wasn't even anyone I knew. What had happened? After I left Gilberto's, I went to... I went to where? That's the whole trouble. I don't know. Somebody must have slipped me a mickey. But if they did, brother, that was some bomb. But what am I going to do? i got to find out who I am. When I came out of the bathroom, I heard the phone ring. And the woman answering it. Hello. Yes. So I grabbed the opportunity yes, to get is. into the bedroom and start searching. Not right at the moment. I got a couple of more shocks. A badge. Detectives. A thirty-eight short barrel and ammunition. Plus holster. Picture of this guy and his wife. Another group picture at some beer party where every one of the slobs looked like cops. But not a name anywhere. And then I was interrupted as she came back. Here, Johnny, drink this down. It'll do you good. What is it? Just don't think about it. Drink it. What's your name? What's my name? All right, if I ever knew it, I've forgotten. Tell me. Oh, my poor darling. Sure, I knew when Captain Deems called me last night, you'd be in a terrible state. Humor me, huh? Your name? Mary. As well you ought to know, John. Oh, Mary, okay. And I'm John. John who? The way things are, I'm beginning to be not at all sure myself who you are. If you want to know who you were, here. Here's your driver's license. My... John J. McCaffrey, Detective Sergeant New York Police. That's me? That's you. Or who you were. Oh, Johnny, darling. The captain told me everything. How you'd been let go from the department. Let go? A crying shame and a disgrace with your record. I got fired from the police? You were retired. Attrition's the name they put to uh, wait, 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 wait a minute. Now, you're telling me that I'm Detective Sergeant John McCaffrey, and I've been retired, but... I, I, I haven't turned in my badge yet. Well, you've till the end of the week to do that. Oh, have I now? Well, isn't that the great miracle? You know something, Mary? That's right, Mary, is it? Mary. 
This is like the finger of God. A miracle. What a break. I was off the hook. Nobody could touch me now. Not even the Don himself. I didn't have to crawl and beg for my neck, knowing I was going to be rubbed out anyway, whether I timed the million green ones I'd skimmed off the Enterprise's back or not. All I had to do was walk back into my own apartment, pick up the key, get the dough from the safe deposit box, and take it on the lamb. The mob would never find me. They weren't looking for a retired cop. They'd be satisfied with... Then it hit me. If I was using this guy's body, he had to be using mine. That was even better. A ready-made fall guy. But before they moved in on him, I'd better move fast. I got out of the house as soon as I dressed and hit the nearest phone board. Yeah? Gloria? Who's this? Gino, baby. Gino. I told you, your husband, Gino, Gino Capacci. You better be putting me on. You don't even sound like him. Besides, Gino was... Well, well, Gino's what? Hey. Hey, you mean he's there? With you? I didn't say he was. Well, you didn't have to. I know he is. You tell him to stay put till I get there. If you know what's good for you. Don't let him get away. was that? I don't know. Someone looking for you. For me? You mean Gina? What's the difference? We got a twist word? I think it was a hitman. Out of town, maybe. We got a split and fast. No, no, not you. Me. Now, look, I, I got a ride anywhere. Oh, the phone table by your bed. Oh, that's better. I could use a little protection. I'm sorry to run out on you. Oh, you can't. You, you can't leave me behind. You're going to take me. Why? Now, let's stop hacking around, Gino. Whatever you've been stealing from the organization, if you can't give it back, let's both of us get out of range before they start burying our bodies. What do you mean, stealing? Well, I know you got that safe deposit key. You think anyone would figure all you kept in that box was savings bonds? You don't know how much I'd give to know just what is in that box. i got to figure a way to make use of it. Oh, never mind that right now. Let's get out of here while we still can. You're right. Let's go. Hello, Gino. You and the doll going someplace? Hold on. Oh, hiya, Lorenzo. Yeah, enough in the apartment, so we figured we'd cut out and have some breakfast. That don't fit the plans like the man told me. First, you come with me. Put away the cannon. I keep it hidden till we get in the car, but it's still there. Let's move, Gino. Oh, what about me? Who cares, baby? Just go back. <laughs> Lock up and sit and wait. Come on, Gino. You've got an appointment you don't seem to want to keep. Where are we headed, Lorenzo? The driver knows. I'd like to know. <laughs> I could just bet. <laughs> okay, ask you something, Amici. Yeah, try. Where was I last night? That's one of the things that interests the boss. You mean you don't know any more than me, huh? It's one of the things we want to find out. Hey, you have to hold that cannon on me. What is it, Magnum 44? Right. Magnum 44. It could blow your middle right through your backbone. Now, don't get cute. I'm not going to get cute. I'm going to get crazy. You want to hear something? Well, it didn't say to gag you. Okay. I'm not Gino Capacci. Sure. And I'm Woody Allen. Now, where does that get it? I'm leveling with you. No matter how wild it seems, I think you better know who I really am. Try me. I don't know what happened last night. While I was out of touch, wherever I was, but before I went there, wherever that was, I was Detective Sergeant John J. McCaffrey, Shield Number 5X20. You don't say. Hey, you got to believe me. Well, at least listen to me, will you? Wherever you take me now, you got the wrong guy. Sure, sure. But don't tell me. 
Get it the number one. You know what's going to happen to me if I turn up there on the carpet? We all got problems, Amici. That's yours. Hey, you want to see something? What? A key. So what? Take a closer look. Save the deposit box. So? You got any idea how much cash money could be locked up in it? Money that can't be traced? Money for the taking? I don't, but I'm sure Mr. One does. We can make a deal. No deal. I know when I'm well off. Yeah, I guess you... Hey, hey look out for that truck. Huh? What the hell? You... you... You broke my arm. Yeah, yeah, you live <laughs> if you don't tempt me to use your gun. Oh. Okay, driver, you got a Magnum 44 right under your rear. Just slow down the car and stop. I'll get you for this. The last thing I do... Shut up. Okay, driver, just park. Nice and easy. Now, first off, Lorenzo, open the door. I, I can't. You still have one good arm open. <laughs> now out. You at the wheel. Don't even breathe. That's good. Turn around, Lorenzo. <laughs> now you, driver. Just don't say anything. I'm not going to hurt you. Just want to take your place. That's real nice. And leave the driver to me. You and Lorenzo can find your own way home. Yeah, I wish I thought it was going to be that easy. Because there wasn't any plan for me unless I could go back somehow in time to where this fantasy began. To find myself, to be myself again. Only where was that? Where had it all begun? I said, leave the driving to me, but where to drive? I couldn't go home to Mary. I wasn't the man she married. I had to hide somewhere, for the man whose body was mine was marked for death. And then suddenly it came to me. Of course, I had to go home, because that was where my old self was. I had to face him. And perhaps together we could find our way back to our own identity. A confusing story? Yes. But infinitely more confusing for the people who have to live it. Can John McCaffrey ever find his true self again? Or is he unfairly marked for death by the organization while the man they wish to eliminate by some supernatural accident beyond our power to imagine will go scot-free. I shall return shortly with Act Three. Both men in this strange story of cross-purposes and identities are desperate to solve their futures. The real John McCaffrey to save his life and find his way back to his wife. The real Gino triumphantly realizing that his neck is off the block and his future secure, save for one thing, the money and other things he has buried in his safe deposit boxes. To secure these, he has to return and face his wife, Gloria. Who is it? Gino. Not you again. Just go away. Uh, listen, can you hear me? Yeah, but you don't even sound like... I don't care what I sound like. I got a way I can convince you I'm Gino. How? You wear a gold anklet. It's inscribed inside. To my sex boat from her captain. Because no matter how I sound or look, I'm Gino. I'll give you more proof. I've got a bracelet you gave me that's inscribed, You're what keeps me ship Captain. Now, will you open up? Look, I, I, I don't know what's happening. What do you want? Something very simple. A key out of my table drawer. The, the safe deposit key? Yeah. Oh, well, you're too late. Gino, I, I don't know, the man who looks like Gino, took it with him. Where'd he go? I don't know. 
Lorenzo. Oh, I guess you know who he is. My so-called bodyguard. He took Gino, the man, away. Damn it, Gloria, with the key? Yes. Oh, no. Look, this crazy thing has happened. It was all so perfect. Looking the way I do, I could sneak out from under, but i got to have that key. It's too late. Well, maybe I can catch up with him. Look, look when I, I left you last night at Gilberto's, where'd I go? Come on, where'd I go? I don't know. I, I just don't know. But I came home, eh? You didn't. I didn't even know you. Gino came All home. right, Gino. Where had he been? Well, look, it's no you shaking me. You hurt my arm. Come on now, will you? I don't know. He, he didn't know. Last night was all a blank to him. The same it is to me. Yeah, well, then I guess the only way you can solve it, Gino and you, or whoever you are, is between the two of you. Yes. Hello, Mary. I, I don't know you. You don't recognize me? No, I... I don't know who you are. Suppose I was to say when I kissed you in front of the priest at our wedding, the words I whispered in your ear were, Mary Arun, we're in God's pocket at last. Oh, they, they were the words, but how could you know them? Because no matter how I look or sound, I'm your John. Now, can I come in? Well, I, I let you in, but you're not my John. But, what is it you want? I want to see your husband. The, 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 the man you think is John. Where is he? I don't know. And I mean that from my heart. I, I don't know where he's gone. I've got to find him. Have you any idea where I might? It's life or death. Any other day I might have. Only today isn't like any other day. The whole world has turned topsy-turvy. He, he might be at the precinct, but I doubt it. That's the last place he'd go. How do you know? Because... I told you, Mary, I'm John, remember? I think I must be going mad. Why are you looking for John? For for the man I I thought was my John, or... I I don't know what I'm saying, but... Why are you looking for... For the man you're looking for? Because I want to get back into my own body before this one is shot full of holes and dumped in the river in a cement jacket. What? Unless I find the man you sent off this morning... There won't be any John coming back to you ever. And a crook named Gino Capacci, who's mixed up in every dirty racket in the city, including Double Cross and his boss, will get away clean unless I find him. I came away from my house and my beloved Mary, crumbling to pieces inside. What was this terrible judgment that had been visited on us? Bad enough to lose my job, but to lose my wife, my future. Even my own self was even worse. What could I do now? I headed for the subway, fishing in my pocket for money, and my fingers closed around the safe deposit key. Of course, there was one chance... If there was anywhere I might find the real Gino Carpaccio, it would be at the bank. I fished out the key and looked at it. An ordinary safe deposit key, numbered for identification. But what bank? I crossed my fingers, Gloria might know. Yes? It's uh, Gino. You alone? Yeah. Oh, Gino, you... Hold it, baby, hold it. Just tell me one thing. Only after you tell me. Are you all right? I'm fine. Now it's your turn. Uh, what uh, bank do I use? Honey, are you still all cooked Never up? mind that. What bank? Second national, but okay, I want to Okay, babe. Do... All I need to know. The vault manager recognized me, and the sheet I had to sign had earlier signatures on it by Gino himself. What I forged was close enough, and the box had just what I figured. I didn't stop to count the money. What was more interesting was a list of names and the whole structure of the organization. And what was most interesting after I put the box back and came out was meeting myself. I've been waiting for you. Don't move. This is a gun in your back. I've been looking for you. 
Now, let me ask you something, Gino or John, whatever you want to call yourself. Where were we last night? And how did this whole mix-up happen? I don't care. For me, I mean, for Gino Carpacci, it works out great. But not so great for John McCaffrey, huh? How do we meet each other? How do we ever make the switch? Uh, yes, sir. What will it be? A uh, jump of rye. Some water on the side. Uh, coming right up. <laughs> what is this place? I never saw it before. Oh, it's been here a long time. I call it the other side of the coin. <laughs> Here's your drinking. How much? Oh, tonight's a special night. Everything on the house. What's the occasion? <laughs> Just my pleasure, a kind of a special night for me. <laughs> it's like my, my, my birthday. So, good for you. Happy birthday. Oh, come on now. I want everyone happy. What's your problem? It doesn't matter. It does to me. Tell you what, if I gave you a wish, what would you wish? What difference would it make? <laughs> you never can tell. Ah. <laughs> uh... I don't want to kid around. Oh, come on, take a chance. You see that guy down at the other end of the bar? You mean the dude with the stick pin and the diamond rings? Nah, he looks kind of familiar. Ah, that's Gino Capacci. Big wheel in the mob. Got it made. Sensational blonde for a wife. And on top of all the rackets, there's nothing in the world he doesn't want, right? I guess not. It, uh... <laughs> you know something funny... He feels just the way you do right at this moment. How do you know how I feel? <laughs> Secrets of the trade. You know what you were saying to yourself as you stare down into that rye and water in front of you? Maybe. I'll tell you. You were saying the way things have turned up, I'd give anything to be in somebody else's shoes, not mine. <laughs> right? Yeah. Well... Maybe. So it's midnight and I'm closing. And like I said, it's my birthday. I've decided to give the both of you a birthday present from me. Have a happy. You remember now, the bar, how I became Gino when you became me. I remember the bar vaguely. Last night, you wanted to wish yourself in anyone else's shoes, so you ended up in mine. And I felt the same way, so I ended up in yours. So I'm the lucky one, thanks to our friend the bartender. Or you uh, remember him and the bar. It did happen then, eh? <laughs> Yes, sir. What'll it be? What kind of rocks? Make it a double. Oh, sure thing. <laughs> you you have troubles, buddy. Bigger than you could dream of, Mike. Just give me the drink, eh? Yes, on the way. <laughs> but if you have problems, just forget them. Everybody steps up to this bar, got them. You, you are no different. <laughs> they all got nothing next to me. I got the number one. What's number one? My neck. You know anyone else's shoes I could step into? I don't care what his problem is. Just give me the word. I'll step right in. Yes, yes, you told me. That's why I just made a deal with the guy right down the bar. Oh, yeah? What kind of a deal? No, why don't you move on down next to him and we could talk it over. Oh, what do I got to lose? All right, everybody. Just please, you two, Gino. Get away from that guy. Oh, no, 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 Lorenzo. Now, wait. I mean, give me a break. Will you give me a break? I'm here for only one thing. The boss says goodbye. Is he going to be all right, Doctor? 
Oh, yes, thanks to a good constitution, he'll make it. Oh. Now, don't spend too long with him, Mrs. McCaffrey. He's had quite a morning. Oh, but who, what do you mean? Well, the press and all the publicity about his reinstatement on the force and his promotion because of his bravery under fire. Oh, he, the commissioner himself was here. I understand there's quite an award for the evidence he's dug up for the DA's office. Oh, yes, that, but... but... How does he look? Well, you can't expect too much now. He had a couple of bad chest wounds, but luckily nothing serious was damaged. He's weak and lost some blood, but I don't think you'll find him looking too bad. Here we are. Well, Sergeant McCaffrey, I've brought you a visitor. Mary? Oh, oh Johnny. It's yourself you are. Well, what else would you ask? Oh, not a thing in the world now you're back. Well, where have I been then? Oh, darling, you, you don't remember. There's a lot of things I don't remember. What, what day is it then? Monday. No, 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 I don't mean that. What is the date? Oh, the 1st of March. Oh, is that all? It seems such a long time since yesterday, and I came home after drinking. Oh, that wasn't yesterday, dear. That was the day before. Oh, no, no, no. It had to be yesterday. The last day of the month. I remember when Bill was telling me I was through on the force, and I was thinking to myself the date was February 28th. And so it was. So... That makes it yesterday. Oh, no, darling. You see, you, you've lost a whole day here in the hospital with the operation and all. But how could that be if it's the 1st of March? Because, dear heart, it's leap year. The day you lost was the 29th of February. Oh, Mary. Would you hold me close now? And promised me that day was lost entirely. It was for you. You were under sedation all the time. Oh, then heaven be thanked. All the rest was... All what rest, dear? Never mind, darling. It's a lost day I'll never miss as long as I live. <laughs> Oh, the things a man can dream. That past master of quotes, Mr. William Shakespeare, said it all. We are such stuff as dreams are made on, and our little life is rounded with a sleep. Not to twist the intent of the quote, how fortunate that Detective Sergeant, now Lieutenant McCaffrey, awakened from his sleep. And to himself, not the terror of being imprisoned in someone else's body. I'll be back shortly. cast included Ralph Bell, Bryna Rayburn, Bob Caliban, and Ian Martin. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by True Value Hardware Stores. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. The preceding program is furnished by CBS Radio. Your dial is set for 15 minutes of late news with John Scott. WOR New York and RKO General Station. It's 8 o'clock. Defense and prosecution wind up their summations in the Patty Hearst case. Idaho Senator Frank Church joins seven other candidates in seeking the Democratic presidential nomination. Talks are resumed in the strike against transport of New Jersey. It's 31 degrees in clear mid-Manhattan. The man says partly cloudy and not as cold tonight. The low in the low 30s. Partly sunny and mild tomorrow. The high in the middle 50s. This is John Scott with the 8 o'clock edition of the news. 
Patricia Hearst, the defense attorney, told the jury today that Miss Hearst's case is, in his words, not a case about bank robbery. It's a case about dying or surviving. Attorney F. Lee Bailey has argued that Miss Hearst was forced by the Symbionese Liberation Army to take part in a 1974 bank robbery. Government lawyer James Browning has said her participation was voluntary, and in closing statements today, he urged the jury to reject Miss Hearst's testimony to the contrary. Bailey and Browning made their closing comments today. Browning spoke two hours, reading from Miss Hearst's writings and exhibiting a necklace the newspaper heiress had received from SLA member William Wolfe. Bailey's statement was surprisingly brief, barely touching on evidence, stressing the theme that Miss Hearst wanted only to prolong her life. Idaho Senator Frank Church says that the Ford administration is weak, that Democratic candidates for the presidency are not discussing real issues. Church has joined the seven-man Democratic race. Speaking today in Idaho City, Church said examples of weaknesses are Mr. Ford's pardon of former President Nixon and what he termed crimes against freedom committed by the government. Church headed a Senate investigation into CIA wrongdoing. The next primary election is Tuesday in North Carolina. Democratic hopeful Jimmy Carter told voters in Charlotte today that he will defeat George Wallace in every southern state but two. Those two... Alabama, where Wallace is governor, and Mississippi. In Kinston, remarks by Wallace centered on his health, which he said is good. Wallace has been in a wheelchair since a 1972 attempt on his life. GOP presidential challenger Ronald Reagan, campaigning today in North Carolina, said election predictions have turned around. Reagan said he read in November if he came close to President Ford in early...